Hey everybody, thanks for watching. I'm here in Denton, Texas to see Dr. Kwan. Dr. Kwan originally became really well known for doing golf biomechanics research, like how the human body moves in the golf swing. And then I think, I'll have to ask him, but I think he got more into not just how the body moved, but like how to get the body to move that way. And that's really the whole point of Be Better Golf. Like it's not just about what happens, but how to make it happen. And that's kind of where the step drills came in. And I started seeing all these really well-known coaches doing this step drill stuff that to get people into um, the positions they've always looked to get into and hit better shots, be more athletic. And step drills have been around forever, but there's these are done in a protocol that's like really interesting. So interesting that I wanted to come here. So Mike and I are, are here trying to find this place. <laughs> Let's go. Hey guys, I'm here in the lab at Texas Women's University. Texas Women's University. Women's. Yeah. I, I, how many people do that? <laughs> hey, I'm in the lab at Texas Women's University with Dr. Kwan. Thanks for having me. <laughs> very much. Thank you very much. Welcome. Uh, so we're just going to get straight into it. Uh, the, uh, Dr. Kwan, you, uh, we'll put a little bio up uh, later, but let's just get straight into I know a lot of people. Uh, want to ask you your opinion about this and kind of watching your research over the last like eight or ten years or so it seemed like you s the stuff when I started noticing you was with functional swing plane and and analysis of what happened in the golf swing it is important to uh, clearly understand what is exactly happening mm -hmm. so for that that we should be able to measure different things and uh, particularly in golf swing, the most the fundamental piece of information is the swing plane. So you need to know how do your club is moving. Mm -hmm. And then based on that, you will be able to perhaps classify the swing styles and different right. things. And then with each style, you will be able to add uh, the characteristics of each okay. style, right? So that way we'll be able to uh, you know, increase the level of understanding of what is actually happening uh, during the swing. So uh, for me, uh, swing plane was uh, really, uh, you know, the first uh, topic that I was interested in. Right. And I'm still using it actively uh, yeah. in different uh, analysis. And then what you found with swing plane, just to, to put my, um, what I got out of it, and uh, I want to get your take, is basically that you can do all kinds of stuff, but really from about waist high here to waist high there, that's kind of where the swing plane kicks in. So we could have a Shane Lowry like this, or we could have a Ricky Fowler like that, yeah. but right here is where the money is made is that yeah, right yeah really uh, from uh, horizontal to horizontal so okay. before and after impact so kind of show me where the function what is the functional swing plane and, and where is it if so you kind of go down that way basically the functional swing plane is uh, uh, defined by the club head trajectory mm -hmm. from uh, you know the horizontal shaft position mm -hmm. before impact and then after okay so during this phase if you look at the club head trajectory it gives you almost the perfect uh, plan of motion. Oh, okay. So that's where it really starts to become like the roof of a house. Yeah, or something and like also that. the hands stay uh, close to the swing plane. So you can really say uh, the, s the functional swing plane is the plane of club motion. Okay. At least okay. from uh, mm -hmm. uh, this position. The, to the plane to of the entire position. club or the club head? Uh, initially, it's a computer uh, by using the trajectory of the club head. Uh -huh but actually it also represents uh, the motion plane of the whole club. The shaft and everything, you'll yeah. see it yeah. really at plainer. At least there. from uh, this horizontal position to uh, the position where you lose uh, the wrist uh, cut completely. So that was kind of like, you started out like figuring out some really interesting things about the, the swing plane that really helped a lot of golf instructors out there narrow down their focus of like what's important. Because after that stuff came out, we heard a lot less about the style of how it was at the top and more like, okay, you're just going to have to get into this window uh, entry point. What did you find there about helping people get on a better plane? Traditionally, I'll just show you. Traditionally, we see everybody with, a, a, not everybody, a lot of players that, that are doing whatever they're doing and then they're getting to about there and the, pl the swing plane is about yep. uh, like that. So what did you find that helped people get onto a better plane, especially for like slicers? Our most recent study, which mm -hmm. is actually uh, accepted this year, oh, great. and it will be published soon, um, uh, looked at the, uh, the hand motion plane mm -hmm. and the uh, functional swing plane okay. and see how these are related. 
And it turned tell, out me, tell me the difference between the hand motion plane and then the functional swing plane. So uh, we use exactly the same method for the hand motion. Oh, okay. So you have the hand uh, trajectory here. Oh, so so same thing from about here to here. It's on uh, one for plane. the hand, uh, you know, f from the okay, hor horizontal position here. Here to. Um, uh, mid, uh, mid follow. I call it mid follow through, but uh, okay. when the club is uh, right. parallel to the ground. Mm -hmm. So, when you relate the the characteristics of the hand motion plane and the functional swing plane, they are closely uh, related. Okay. So, in other words, um, so now I'm sort of uh, developing a strategy of um, mainly using the hand motion plane. Mm -hmm. to address a lot of issues. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, it turned out that the, the uh, slope and the direction of the hand motion plane mm -hmm. affects all other things uh, oh. quite a bit. Right. So if you direct your hand properly, then you will overall have a good uh, swing shape. Okay. Yeah, so okay. Uh, and then we saw a clustering of uh, different styles. Mm -hmm. So for example, if your hand plane is more outward, yeah. Then you tend to have a stiffer uh, hand motion plane. Out towards like first base. Yeah. Yeah. And then with that, the swing plane will also show outward alignment, but the gap increases as the hand plane becomes more outward. Mm -hmm. And then at the same time, the shape of the club head motion relative to the swing plane also changes. Mm -hmm. So the more you uh, swing outward, yeah. That you'll have a flatter clip head motion uh, path here, yeah. but you have big deviation during the follow through. Oh, okay. And then when you have. So there's this funneling that happens back here, but then you could finish the o over here or over here. Yeah, so uh, you have. Uh, Let's see this just for a second. You have hand motion plane going outward. Mm -hmm. Then the swing plane will also show a slightly outward alignment, uh -huh. and that there's a large angle between them. Mm -hmm. So the direction your, hand is, your hands are moving and the direction the clip is moving are different. Okay. And then as uh, the hand plane gets more outward, this angle gap increases. Okay. And then when that happens, the hand plane gets uh, more stiff. Yeah. And then uh, you see a lot of flipping motion oh, okay. here. And exactly the opposite happens. When your hand, uh, hand plane uh, you know, shows the inward alignment, mm -hmm. then the swing plane will also start showing inward alignment. Yeah. And the angle gap increases as the Mm -hmm. and the plane gets more inward. And then also the shape of the club head motion relative to the swing plane changes. Yeah. But now you will see fairly a planar path here during the follow through, yeah. but you will see big deviation mm -hmm. in the dancing phase. So if your hand plane is uh, relatively uh, neutrally aligned yeah. toward the target, then your swing plane will be also showing neutral uh, alignment. Yeah. And then you have a small gap between them. With that, the, if you look at the clip head motion pad, it will have a reasonable deviation from the swing plane up here. Mm -hmm. And then it comes down to the swing plane and show really good planar motion. And then the hand, uh, clip head will move again upward. So it will show a deviation, but the, the deviations are uh, well balanced. Yeah. So uh, basically, it depends on how your hand mo uh, moves. So you're from what you're seeing, if you want to be real consistent and have a more narrow window of how you're moving the club, neutral is, is better? Yeah, it's yeah. A, the simplest shape. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. So when the swing motion is a simple, then you don't have to control you know, many things at once. Let me ask you a question about, because th then this might get us into what we're, what we're doing today, but what is the connection between having a good functional swing plane and what you do with the club on the initial takeaway? So. The traditional thing we see in so many golfers, stand down the line here, Michael, is we see this kind of tucked and under <laughs> takeaway like this. And usually the pattern goes tucked and under like this will eventually mean an over and over a swing plane, functional swing plane that's going yep. towards third base. And for the pros, kind of like before video came out, like, you know, where people could film their own swings, it kind of wasn't that unusual to see some really good pros be a little under but now the video is out e almost every pro is like th from the down the line view like through here so my question is what's the connection between a good takeaway and then a good functional swing plane let through? me let me put it this way uh, one of the main reasons why we see a lot of trouble in the backswing yeah is because now the backswing is getting slower okay so in the, in, the, right. in, the, in the modern swing, 
Yeah. Um, a lot of instructors uh, put emphasis on the downswing. Yeah. So no matter what you do uh, during the backswing, so you just bring the club and the body to the initial position of the downswing. Yes, they, they talk about the backswing being very positional, yeah. and then the downswing is the athletic part. And then try to uh, put a lot of effort in Get downswing. Get athletic and dynamic. That's the main problem that, uh, That's do, too late. You know, that I see. So in order to have a good connection between the backswing and downswing, you have to increase the backswing speed. Okay. So okay. that's actually the secret of uh, what I do, yeah. uh, in a sense. Mm -hmm. Because I promote uh, the, the, the importance of a backswing. Make a and faster and more dynamic backswing. Yeah. When you have a faster backswing, you don't have time for this uh -huh. or this. Okay. Because, uh, because of the momentum. All I'm trying to do is do f go fast back, I go. Yeah. Then all you want to do is uh, to slow this down actively. Mm -hmm. Because you have faster motion of the body and club, mm -hmm. and then your primary goal here is to slow this down and then okay. change the direction. Because I know, if I just keep, I'm going to get real sloppy there. So I know okay, the brakes have to start to start at some point. Yeah. So it has to be yeah. continuous motion. Mm -hmm. You don't stop here. Okay, gotcha. But it's a continuous motion here. Okay. But in order to align everything properly, then you have to align your backswing properly. Okay. And that the key is the speed of backswing. So you, so we're still talking about plane here because we're going to get into that. That that's more for what we're doing today. But for the plane, you're saying yes. There's a big connection between having a good athletic and maybe faster backswing, and then getting a good plane too, not yeah. just speed, but a good yeah. plane. So uh, if you just have a slow backswing and then try to adjust the, the downswing plane, that's not a good approach. Okay. You have to start with the, your backswing. Okay by guiding the body and the club properly during the backswing, mm -hmm. you are actually establishing good uh, planes in the downswing. Okay. All right, so we're gonna get into that in our next video where we're gonna get into, beyond theory, uh, we came here really for Be Better Golf, so to, to, how, to how to make golfers better using some of these ideas. So uh, we'll get into that now. What kind of gave you the inkling that, that step drills might be a, something that could actually make the good positions happen? Thank you for asking. Yeah. <laughs> um, so here's the story. Okay. Thanks for watching, everybody. Click the subscribe button now to make sure that you see all the videos that are coming out that I shot with Dr. Kwan. If you'd like to see all the raw footage, everything right now, right this second, before it's even edited, it's about three hours and 45 minutes of footage, including a session that I did with Dr. Kwan that's a super in depth, a session that Mike Padilla did with Dr. Kwan, who is like a plus five almost pro golfer, and also a LPGA hopeful golfer, who is one of the top amateurs in the country, came in and did the full 3D analysis and everything, and it really got deep into the swing plane and everything. So if you're really interested in the next cutting edge of golf swing analysis and also implementation about how to make people better using this information, and you don't wanna wait for all the Be Better Golf videos that are gonna come out and you wanna see all of the footage. Go to BeBetterGolf.net slash premium. You'll see it there. Thanks for watching, everybody. Thanks for supporting the channel, too. Bye. Backswing speed as well, backswing speed as well. You can make a continuous motion, yes. It's under your control. Mm -hmm. Yep. So you can have the best combination eventually. Best combination of control and athleticism and move movement. Yes. Yeah. yeah. You can speed. You can generate enough speed, but still you should be able to control your movement. Right.